So, Paul, this is kind of what we think about in space, right? Astronauts floating around, not breathing, kind of hanging out, having fun in space. But it's not exactly right that there's no air and that there's no gravity. This is certainly what we think. When we think of space, we think, well, they're wearing space, so it must be because they couldn't breathe or they were That's outside. Right. I'm sure most science fiction movies have the moment when their space is disrupted oh, so and they have to dash exactly. inside. That's right. And and sh they're just floating around, you know, purposely, like they're almost like wading in a pool of water, yeah. Yes, and now, so this is what basically people think space is. No air, no gravity. But neither of these is quite true, That's as right. we're going to see. So let's think about air first. Now, the air in this room, we can't see it, but there's a lot of it in here. If we take a cubic metre of why air... we're alive. Yes, if we take a cubic metre of air, so about this big, uh, that weighs about a kilogram. Yep, uh, same okay. as a bottle of water or something like that. Yep. Um, and if you even take, like, one cubic centimetre of air, yep. that's got about a thousand million, million, million air molecules it, that little so bit. there's a lot of molecules packed into a little small one kilometer or one centimeter, even bigger than one kilometer <laughs> square. But as you go up, it gets less. So basically every roughly, it depends on the temperature of the day, but yep. roughly every seven kilometers you go up, the density of air drops in half. So at seven kilometers, there's a half less air than there is right if we're standing at the ground. And that's right. So at the top of Mount Everest, which is you know, eight or nine kilometers up, it's about 40% the density of air at the surface, typically. And it's harder to breathe at uh, Mount Everest, and often they sometimes need oxygen tanks. Yeah, so I mean, humans get altitude sickness typically about three or four kilometers yep. up. Um, we have probably all observed at uh, Mauna Kea in Hawaii, yes. which is at just over four kilometers up, and they have oxygen tanks in every dome to <laughs> help right. people. I've never been particularly sick about it, but I know a lot of people, have, okay. often the mega fit people, get really, really sick at that sort of altitude. On an airplane, right? Airplanes fly at 8 to 10 kilometers, and they always talk about there may be a loss of air, and therefore you have your oxygen mask deployed. And most people, if they had to breathe the air at 10 kilometers, which might be, say, 30% as dense as the surface, would pass out. That's right. Which is why you get these oxygen tanks. But then if you go up from so, so 7 kilometers, you've lost half the air. By the time you're at 40, you lost another half. So it's about a quarter of the density. That's right. And by the time you're another 7 kilometers up, so about 21 kilometers, you're now at one eighth. But there's so still on. air at yeah. that height. It doesn't abruptly stop. So if you do a graph of it, it's going to look something like this. So what you'll see is the density is the most at the surface yep. and it drops off. This is an exponential curve, but it's sort of what we call asymptotes up here. It, it never gets to zero. Yes. So as you go up and up, it gets less and less and less and less, but it doesn't stop at any particular point. So that means when the astronauts are in space, they're actually in air. They're in the atmosphere. That's right. A little bit of it. So, for example, the International Space Station orbits about 400 kilometers yeah. up. And at there, the density of air is one trillion times less than the density of the Earth's surface. So that's a lot less. But again, it's still not zero. Still a thousand million atoms in every cubic centimetre. That's not bad. Um, but not enough to breathe. Absolutely not enough to breathe. That's right. And when you go further up still, it will drop even further. At some point, we stop being in the Earth's atmosphere and start being in the, kind of the sun's atmosphere because you've got a wind blowing out from the sun. So essentially, you're far away enough from the Earth where there's less air molecules from the Earth and more air molecules or molecules from the sun. You've got a wind of gas coming out yep. from the sun and that sweeps away the tenuous, very thin upper layers. So when you're in deep interplanetary space, like on your way to Mars and the yep. moon or something, you're typically talking about five atoms per cubic centimetre. Okay, so that's a lot less than what we were talking about, <laughs> even at seven kilometres in an airplane. But it's still not zero. That's right. So what happens if we were to get even past our solar system? Uh, typically we'll stay a similar or maybe get a little bit down, but even the very deepest intergalactic space far away from the Milky Way galaxy, which is the least density, you're still talking about one or two atoms per cubic metre, no yep. longer per cubic centimetre. So again, there's, st there's still a tiny bit, but it's non-zero. So then where do we say atmosphere ends and space begins? Well, isn't this, this one of the tricks, right? You can't just say, hey, there, there's no atmosphere or there's no air, so you're in space. It's kind of this gradual line, which means that we have to find other ways of defining where space begins. And we also have to understand why we care where space begins. I think the most practical way is to look at drag wind resistance. Yep. When I cycled into work this morning, there was a headwind and I felt it. It was really slowing me down as I cycled. So one practical way to say when you're in space is when this drag that slows you down from moving from, because you're forcing your way through an atmosphere and from yep. air becomes unimportant. That's right. And that's often a practical thing and that leads us into the concept of motion in space, which is our next video.